up, everybody. This is Extreme Nick 09 and today we have a special guest with us. You may remember him from the old channel that me and him did together. What was it? PIC? It was something like that. Partners in Crime. And um, welcome Austin Holland to the show today. What's up, everybody? So, Elimination Chamber just happened. It did. Um, um, I almost yeah. have a sigh. <laughs> we're we're going to be grading the whole pay-per-view match by match. Uh, we actually missed the first match of the night. Um, on the kickoff show, the Viking Raiders versus Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. We missed that one, but from what I read, not much happened. Yes, yeah, stats got the match at four minutes and 50 seconds. That right there tells me all I need to know. That's trash. Yeah, that's they didn't. It's not a match that they're investing anything into. They're trying to make the Viking Raiders look strong while they're going towards WrestleMania. And we'll talk about where we think they're going to end up later. But I think that's what they're trying to do. They just wanted to pick up a quick win just to keep the momentum going since they had to drop their belts. And, and it's not the only time you see them. Yeah, for sure. They end up making a random... I guess it ain't random if they're building yeah. towards towards Mania. But it was definitely... No, it seemed random. But either way, the actual match card starts off. And uh, it's Daniel Bryan versus Drew Gulak. And... The idea is, at least from what I'm reading on the backstage, like information or whatever, is that Daniel Bryan is trying to get guys like Curtis Axel and um, Heath Slater and guys like uh, Drew Gulak. I almost said Daniel Gulak. But uh, guys like Drew Gulak trying to give them a shot because he thinks they need a shot. And so he's wanting to put himself in storylines with them so that, um, especially on big pay-per-views, it's supposed to be a big pay-per-view that seemed kind of like an afterthought. But uh, give them a chance to shine with a guy like of his caliber, so... And I don't, I don't disagree with it. I think it's, it, it shows Daniel Bryan's uh, caliber and uh, level of athlete that he is. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the whole match, as you know, but what I did see, uh, there were some, some points in the match I was a little disappointed with. Uh, there were some risky moves that took place in there, and yeah. I get real nervous with Daniel Bryan and his neck. That was that was the thing. That's one of the things I have written down here. Well, for the, the whole match in itself, um, the grade that we gave it was a solid, what was it, a solid B. Yeah, a solid, solid B on that one. So, the thing was, it had great storytelling. The match starts off, and Drew Gulak is kind of outsmarting Brian. So Brian rolls out of the ring. He starts slapping himself in the face a little bit, kind of like, "Hey, I gotta, I gotta show this guy, get this guy more credit and take him more serious." But yeah, there was a, the whole entire time Brian's selling his neck injury, a real injury. Yeah, and there's a dirty German suplex. Oh, it was not pretty. That, that was not pretty. It was a rough landing, and it, that the way. Gulak picked Brent, um, Brian's head up during the pin. I thought it seemed like he was trying to protect him, and then yeah. he rolled out of the ring and had to kind of shake it off. It just it was it was sketchy to me. Yeah. I just I didn't care for that. But I mean, I understand they want to sell something real, and yeah. so I understand their direction. But that move in general was a tough one to to handle. But it, solid B. Yeah. Solid Good. B. Great. Uh, great technical wrestling. I mean, it's great storytelling, technical wrestling, and great. Um, I think he did what he wanted to do. He made Drew Gulak look like somebody that was up to par with him. Brian still gets the victory, he does. which he needs to. Drew Gulak, they don't need to just let him win. That's what I hate. If you're trying to establish credibility with somebody, let him do it slowly. Let him be gradual. We know he shouldn't just be defeating Daniel. You know, in match time, uh, stats got it at 14 minutes 20 seconds. Not bad, just under 15 yeah. minute mark. They usually average about 15. So. Yeah, and that's a good amount of time to give a guy like Drew Gulak who doesn't get a lot of TV time. So they, at least they respected what Brian's trying to do with him. So solid B. So then we follow up with. Andrade and Humberto Carrillo. Uh, this is, in my opinion, where where the show starts to take a downhill almost, turn. Almost immediate. This yeah. one, two matches in, and the first one doesn't really matter. So, yeah. Good wrestling. I, I mean, anytime you see Andrade and Humberto and Ray or Angel, any of those guys that have been in this kind of feud, they always have top, near, top tier matches. Absolutely. It just don't feel like there's a lot to them. Like, there's not a lot of story invested in it besides them trying to use the concrete under the padding yeah. and stuff like that's really the only kind of thing i kept seeing i, I don't even have one thing i have written down was the super hurricane rana and then yeah. um whenever humberto jumped over the referee doing a senton to the outside yeah. that's really all i have besides them pulling the mat i thought and and i got it logged i thought there was some really good technical wrestling in my opinion i feel the story's overdone and it's time to move on you keep playing these, the same shit over and over, and it just gets old. Overall, though, uh, they botched the finish, and, and, and that, can, that can ruin a match. It was a, yeah, the, pool, like the pool tights. He had that win with the tights at the end, and Jardy did. What did we end up giving that one? Uh, we gave that a C plus. I will say, yeah, so yeah, C plus. So, like I said, a good match, but it's just lacking 
lacking depth in the story it feels like a little bit but um i will say we will have to backtrack a little bit because we didn't talk about what we think daniel bryan may be doing That's going right. towards wrestlemania right. andrew gulak for instance um so drew gulak maybe the under the giant battle royal i mean maybe a good showing somewhere like that i don't see him doing anything that storyline is not going to go to wrestlemania no. against daniel bryan no. the rumor mill pretty much has it as Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus WrestleMania rematch from when Daniel lost within like ten seconds when he turned around and got the um, the big kick to the face and uh, it was over with when he dropped the title to him a few, a few years back. So that's the rumor that's supposed to happen with Daniel Bryan going toward WrestleMania. Wouldn't be disappointed in that. Sheamus is a good athlete and everybody mm -hmm. knows Daniel Bryan's a good technical wrestler. I give them time. Just you know, if, if they give them the time they deserve, make up for what they did to us. Because I remember when that match, that was the Royal Rumble winner. And it's supposed to be the main event of WrestleMania, and he won within three seconds, and it was the first match on the card. Yeah. So it was just that's one of those things WWE does. And so now I'm moving on to where we see Andrade and Humberto going towards WrestleMania. Well, fatal four way: uh, Andrade and Carlo and Ray and Angel Garza. I will say that um, this is this is pretty much the match everybody sees happening. It's going to be these guys have kind of been feuding anyway. United States title on the line. I mean, honestly, a solid opening match to WrestleMania, something like that. You know, get these guys a good 15, 20 minutes to go out there. Do I mean, Rey Mysterio and Andrade tore this whole year, last year up as well. And then now, you, we, they showed us tonight they can have a pretty solid match, Humberto and Andrade, and we've seen them go against each other as well. And all the tag team uh, matches they've been having have been solid. So it'd be a strong start off to WrestleMania if they did a Federal 4 match between them. I think they'll, they'll do well. And a lot of people compare Angel Garza to Eddie Guerrero right now. So... Up next, we have the men's SmackDown men's tag team elimination chamber match for the SmackDown tag team title. So, Bobby, what do you think about that, man? <laughs> we gave it a C. Twitter loved it. It was it was just um, it was messy, and that's what I posted on Twitter. My I tweeted and I said it's, I said this SmackDown uh, tag team chamber match is just messy. That was the biggest to me. Like I said earlier um, to you, this is the biggest moment of the pay per view was to me was that shooting star press swinging star press off of that top of that chamber it was the only time i watched the pay-per-view and sit there and said damn like that was actually really cool and they had some other the way i explained it to you earlier i feel like this match was a messy a messy match that was saved and got that c ranking because of a few unique spots like that shooting star press and then otis charging we've seen people like nia Jax run and bust herself through the pod but we've never seen them fly out of the chamber completely right. like otis did so i thought that was a pretty cool pretty cool moment I was dead yeah if you can't get the crowd going then what do you have there and, and you expect you expect new day and the usos for as much as they have worked together to have a hotter start than that and they really didn't have a hot start and i have the order here um, as soon as that move wasn't it as soon as that shooting star press was done, Lucha House Party got eliminated. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was as soon as soon afterwards. Um, after Otis went through the chamber, he got they got eliminated. Tucker got eliminated right after that big moment. So after every big moment, it was actually the demise of the team that ended up having the big moment. Tucker also did a cool senton front flip on top of a bunch of people off the pie for a bigger dude. That was pretty cool to see. Oh, it was cool. Every every uh, team got an elimination mm -hmm. apart from uh, Lucha House Party. I do have a few other moments. And that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it was, like I said, it just it didn't flow. You had to, It had no flow to it because there were so many people. Um, there was a cool move, a figure four that Miz had, and then um, John Morrison hit the Starship Pain, landed on him while he was in the figure four. And then the actual ending when they pinned the Usos was a really dope pin. The single match was highly predictable leading into WrestleMania, and we kind of knew where we were going here. Um, that's why I don't feel like any of these matches really did anything moving us forward. Um, talking about WrestleMania, what well, me and you had said, we kind of see The Miz and John Morrison defending in some type of three team with The Usos and The New Day. And um, whether that be a ladder match, a TLC match, you know, one of them kind of tag team matches. And then after that, I don't want to see them stick to three teams besides overdo it because we, I, you can see if you watch the Hardy Boys, Dudleys, and Edge and Christian, six people is just fine and it gives everybody their moments to shine besides being over sloppy and just have too many people. And then um, we said Lucha House Party probably won't be at WrestleMania besides the Battle Royal. And then we see Dolph Ziggler and Otis most likely pre-showing it up with Mandy Rose, that storyline leading towards him. Because they still wouldn't be doing that storyline if it wasn't going towards WrestleMania in some form or fashion. Yeah, it was interesting. But the the lack of use for the entire chamber itself, I mean, 
I'm on top of the pod, you're repeating the same moves yeah. over and over. It's like, why are we now, even continuing this? Now that that's been done, now that that moment has been done so often. Oh, sure. You gotta turn the door knob in before oh. you show it. So, I'm gonna edit it there. It's, it's raw, it's raw, unedited footage. Um, raw! But, but, like, that's, that's the thing that we were talking about. The Elimination Chamber now is so. It, the, the originality, like, when it first came out, we had Rob Van Dam, HBK, Triple H, Booker T. Kane. Jericho, I think, in this match, and every time they hit that steal in the first few chambers, when they hit that steal, you were like, "Damn, this!" Yeah. It was like, "Damn, I would hate to be the person chosen to be in this match oh, when he comes marks. around." Left marks on their back. Yeah, I mean, he knew it was real. It looked like they were getting like they had the little like the looked like a grill. Like when you grill something, they had the fucking bars on the back, and it took the fun away because now the chamber looks like a big playhouse. You go in there, you like they do these big moves on the, that padding, but it doesn't have the same effect as it used to. And I think that the jumping off the pot is old now. And you can only bust through the plexiglass so many times. You can only before it gets old. That's why I was like I said I was impressed by the move, the shooting star press because I hadn't seen nobody climb. No, I haven't seen that. I haven't I seen hadn't anybody seen, go on the outside. Yeah, nobody's like gotten on the outside of the chamber that I'm um, that I know of. So that was why we ended up giving it the C because there was some unique things that kind of kept it up. But I thought it was funny that you mentioned it looked like a playhouse because I literally wrote it's like a weird cage match now. It's not even yeah. a chamber. It's just. Glorified cage. It's match. weird or to you me. Could call it hell in the cell, I guess. It's weird to me how not used the cage, like the actual chamber, seems to be. It's like a when you took out those that metal when you took those paddings and you put them there, it, it took away everything. They hardly slam each other up against the pad. Now Otis and Tucker did this cool thing where they were kind of sandwiching two guys at once. I forgot who they were doing that to, but they had a good use of the chamber, which I was excited to see because it almost seems like the chamber's an afterthought while you're in the match, and it's really really <laughs> random. But that's how it is now. Either way, strong C. And we'll be, like I said, we see Otis Ziggler doing something and the rest of the guys being thrown in some kind of little tag team ladder match or something like that. So up next, we got what? AJ versus Aleister Black. Now this one, I had high hopes for it. We did give it a, a B. It was mm -hmm. a good match. The first thing, and it was funny while we were watching it, you said, I'm so tired of seeing fucking kendo sticks. And the <laughs> first thing they get is a, a kendo, kendo stick. stick so. Yeah, it... The only thing that happened with weapons, I mean, where there was a kendo stick, a chair, there was there was the big table moment where Alistair drives AJ through the table with the yeah. double knees. Um, but this, again, highly predictable. If you yeah. watch wrestling enough, you know the special person that's going to pop up is going to be The Undertaker. You know he's going to make um, AJ Styles lose in some form or fashion, and that's exactly what happened. A good, solid match, which is what I figured I'd get from him. It also didn't feel like the fans ever got invested in this one either. No. I don't no. know if I was just hearing shit wrong, but it just it seemed like the crowd was dead the whole entire night. The whole night. And I, I'm a little disappointed in the wrestling fans, but, I, you know, people on uh, social media are talking about how much they really liked it, seeing the same thing, but the crowd was dead, and I totally agree with that. AJ, uh, I wrote down Undertaker, man, because AJ puts uh, Alistair in the uh, tombstone. Yeah, yeah, I've never known. And does the uh, cross of... Uh, Across his neck, yeah, kind of setting up for what we all pretty much knew was going to happen for Undertaker to come into the ring. So it just decides on what, where do we go from here? Um, Alistair gets the win because Undertaker, of course, and literally the, the lights go out. Undertaker's in the ring with his mouth open randomly, and he, he's, he's both yeah, of the by the neck. choking them out to get them out of the way, and then he choke slams AJ, and then Black Mass happens. Alistair gets the win. <laughs> There's, there's two routes they can go here, and there's one route I think they should go and one route that I think they should stay away from. And that's the Undertaker versus AJ Styles is obviously happening in some form or fashion. But I've said it in my WrestleMania Dream Card um, matchup, Alistair Black needs to team with The Undertaker to go against the OC, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and um, Carl Anderson in a three-on-two handicap match so that The Undertaker does not have to carry a full match by himself. I know AJ can have a good match with him, but I just feel like the pressure on Alistair and AJ and the rest of the guys in the match let Undertaker do his big moves, and let's just call it a day. He don't need to be doing full 20-minute matches with AJ Styles right now. I don't, I don't get the chills that I used to get when no. Undertaker was at WrestleMania. That's the problem is that, like you said, it's nostalgia. We love to see it happen. We love to see Taker at WrestleMania. But I don't feel like I used to. Ever since the streak got taken, and then they also made him lose to Roman a few years after, It just yeah. it was just... It's, it's not, not the same thing anymore for me personally, but 
going towards WrestleMania, I'm hoping for the handicap match over the um the singles match for sure. So they did uh, Alistair and AJ did did have the uh, second longest match of the night. So up next we have the Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford defending their um, Raw Tag Team Championships against Seth Rollins and Murphy, the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, and um, to me, a glorified Monday Night Raw match, nothing crazy special here. Um, the few moments that did happen, the Viking Raiders is where that's where their second appearance yeah. comes in. They basically come out there just to get the AOP away from ringside. I couldn't agree more with you. I was, I was really disappointed in it. I felt like the fans were really un 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 uh, uninterested <laughs> in that match. There was a point where there was a hot tag, and it was botched uh, by the Ford guy. Uh, Montez. Yeah, Super was, entertaining guy, but he, he jumps around a lot. I literally wrote down that I think he's a roly-poly because the dude rolled so many times. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. When you do it over and over, you burn yourself out, and it just looks trash. And I hate, I hate to be, because somebody uh, responded to me on Twitter when I was complaining about something, and I hate to be the, the wrestling fans that don't see the good and stuff. Yeah. But I've watched it for so because I wanted to explain this because I want you to sit there and said uh, you were disappointed. I said, damn, we said it a lot. Yeah. And I don't want to come off like the wrestling fans that are never happy because I literally, I literally, when I get on Twitter and I see people bitching all the time, I'm like, fuck. But then you have to think about it. We've been sitting here watching wrestling for, I mean, since like 1999, 2000. I mean, this is like 20 years we've been watching wrestling. And botches stand out. We, well, we, we just know Mistakes when something's out. good and when something's booked poorly. And we know how good it can be. So when it's not up to par, we complain about and it. I mean, that's just how it is. I don't blame We're passionate. I don't blame the talent at all. I blame the creative team. We gave it a C. Strong C. All my attention, and I was happy that it happened, was when KO came down was yep. box popcorn. Yep. That's... Because it added it added comedy to something. That I literally felt like the fans needed that pop because they, they weren't happy. I mean, they, they're they bored. You need something. He walks through the um, audience. He hops the guardrail. He stun but does the stunner to um, Seth Rollins. Uh -huh. And then after the match is over with, he no, I don't, they're just walking out. He just pours some pours popcorn, popcorn. Just casually yeah. pours some popcorn on Buddy Murphy. The, we, we watching needed that, and so did the fans, because it gave them something to say, you know what, I do have something to get excited about. Through that, that yeah, finally, I, I mean, I wrote down uh, the stoner on Rollins was the highlight of the show so far. Yeah, yeah, and that's which is sad when you think about it. But yeah, one move by a guy who wasn't in a match, yeah. <laughs> being the, the the standout thing. So going towards WrestleMania, I obviously see the Street Profits defending their tag team titles in something. Um, to be honest, I didn't think about this earlier. The Street Profits could defend against the Viking Raiders and AOP, and they still be all connected in, a, in this kind of storyline a little bit, but. They kind of see them doing a over getting way too many people involved again and doing AOP, Buddy Murphy, and Seth Rollins versus the Viking Raiders. Somebody somebody else that gets thrown into that. I'm not sure what the plan is, but it just feels like they're going to stack the ring again. I'd like to see Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins one on one. Let them tear the house down. That's what I'd like to see between them two. We have Braun Strowman defending the Intercontinental Championship in a three on one handicap match against Cesaro, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Sami Zayn. Set. It stuck out like a sore thumb on the card, being weird, you know? It seemed super predictable because you, you would assume Braun was going to pick up the win because yeah. I couldn't, for the life of me, understand you've got three guys on one. Why in the hell would another guy let him pin him to become Not a to mention, Braun beat Shinsuke for the belt. That's Shinsuke's intercontinental title, and he's just like, I'd like to stand me one. Yeah, it didn't make like, any sense. Yeah, I don't like that short whole thing. Match. It was under 10 minutes. It was the most unpredictable thing of the night, him winning. And when he actually won, that's the first time... In the night that I sit there, I was like, I was like, oh shit, that really happened. Like, I'm surprised he won. And I do think Sammy is a great worker. I think he's overdue for a singles title run like this at this point of his career. But because he's a great talker on the mic as well. But I just thought the match itself was bland. It was weird from the get go. And really, where does this lead us going towards WrestleMania? Sammy Zayn versus Braun. Does Cesaro and Shinsuke turn on Zayn to where it's a fatal four way? That's what we have written down. We got a fatal four way. I don't. I, don't, I honestly don't know where that's going to go. I thought the concept was stupid. Renee uh, Young uh, tweeted on. Uh, I think it was Renee Young tweeted on Twitter, and she was like, she said, the cargo pants with the boots look is like crazy good. He needs to keep that. It's, it's like somebody. I think it was Renee Young tweeted that, like saying something good about it. And I was like, I don't know. It was, it was probably a smart Alex. Could have been. It could have been. But we gave that a what was a D. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, and it looked absolutely atrocious. Yeah, we gave yeah that that's a straight D. The only reason it wasn't a straight F was because the shock value of Sammy actually winning the belt. 
because I didn't see them taking off Braun leading into WrestleMania at all. So that's what we're going to give that one. So now we have what I would consider the first fucking thing about the whole entire show. And the reasoning is, is because I'm wasted in the match is what bothered me the most. It so did. women's chamber match, the winner moving on to WrestleMania to face Becky Lynch. We have Ruby Riot, Natalia, Sarah Logan, Shayna Baszler, Liv Morgan, and Asuka. So all I have written down here is Sarah Logan doing a crossbody off the top rope. Yeah. I mean, off the top, off the top of the pod, not the top rope. And all I have after that is Shayna headlock. What headlocks? What? <laughs> I'm like, I literally just have like not headlocks. She had that's like her finisher, or whatever she calls it something. But she literally comes in I, I and chokes everybody out. Enough, I already forgot. Forgot what she called it. I was extremely disappointed with that. Um. Kind of to go off of, of how they come in the ring. Uh, Natty and Ruby Wright started it off. Sarah Logan comes in third. Fourth. Mm -hmm. Liv is fifth. Oscar sixth. So, and Shayna comes in. It's like pow, pow, pow. She takes out Ruby Riot, Natty, and, and Sarah Logan. Yeah. Extremely fast. Quick. Whip. I liked one one small thing about this match, and that was that Liv Morgan never tapped. I like that it kind of shows how Sarah Logan taps, Ruby Riot taps, Natty taps. And then you hang Liv, she puts the move on Liv Morgan over the top turnbuckle, and she's like really pulling up on her, and she just passes out instead of tapping. I think it shows, it makes Liv Morgan look a little strong. Um, there and that, but really, this I mean, this was a she eliminated all five other women. Yep, she completely dominated from the moment it started with the moment she entered the ring into the moment the match was over with. So if WWE's goal was to put uh Shayna over as a dominant force, uh, they serve their purpose with this chamber. Yeah, I disagree. But they know Becky Lynch is going to be the person everybody goes for, so Shayna's probably trying to come off as a heel here. So, I mean, getting the heat is good, but this isn't the right kind of heat. This isn't the kind of heat you're getting from being a good heel. This is the kind of heat from bad booking where people are going to boo you out the arena because I'm in there, you do, you, she looks strong, but it doesn't seem realistic and it doesn't seem authentic. What should have happened here, especially while she eliminates somebody with like three minutes left and she's just pacing around the ring waiting for the next pod to open. It just had a bunch of wasted time where she could have sit there and kept beating up on the girl she was beating up on. They could have had a back and forth exchange, actually have a good wrestling match inside of the chamber um, during that time that we literally spent just watching her yell at Oscar through the plexiglass. A lot of wasted time. And we gave, I mean... There was a lot of booing. And uh, we gave it an F. A solid F. A solid F. I hated the match. I'd it wasn't it a, a chamber. Z if I could. Yeah, it wasn't a chamber. But the only thing, like I said, Sarah Logan did that crossbody. And then there was a moment where Shayna um, had Liv Morgan and slammed her head up against the pod. That seemed pretty brutal. Um, besides that, there was really no chamber stuff happening here. Um, oh, there was a, a moment where they used uh, the door. Good use of, of yeah, the yeah. chamber, but it didn't change my mind any because the match was still atrocious. So, but as, like you said, we seen what they did to Roman Reigns, and we seen how we reacted to what they did to Roman Reigns. And I think this is just another bad booking decision. You can make her go in there and have a great wrestling match and have all these women stand out to where you're not just making one monster. You're making a roster of females that now, this is the big point that I saw on Twitter. Now that Shayna did this to all the other girls on that brand, now Becky Lynch is supposed to take time off after dropping the title to Shayna at WrestleMania. Who the hell is going to be a realistic challenge for Shayna come after WrestleMania unless Ronda Rousey comes back? I mean, she just beat the whole roster within three seconds. I mean, she choked everyone out. And I mean, who's going to be a, an actual threat to her that's going to make us be like, that's realistic? Like, she could take the belt. No one. Match itself is only 21 minutes. Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane or whatever. Yeah, they, they're they the tag team champions. They're going to be defending in some form or fashion form come WrestleMania. Fashion. I really don't know what team. I know you had said something about Beth Phoenix and Natty maybe. Um, I know the Iconics are floating around somewhere, I think. Um, you still have Fire and Desire is the only team I can think of that I see this active, that's doing things. And they picked up a win on SmackDown against Carmella and Dana Brooke. Triple threat with Sarah Logan, Ruby Wright, and Liv Morgan. Um, I, that's that's They've been building that for weeks now. With I'm saying that on a more of a pre-show type yeah. issue. I, with how many matches they have on WrestleMania, I could see them doing it. I mean, main events could be on the pre-show, honestly. I mean, they, the way they have to spread it out to where the fans don't get exhausted after big matches. I mean, I understand it, but... 
Um, they've um, been building this. Sarah Logan was the referee on Ruby Riot versus Liv Morgan last week on Raw, and she ended up turning on Liv Morgan after it seemed like they were going to be. She helped her beat Ruby Riot, but then turned on her. So that's going to be some type of triple threat match. And um, who's left? Is that everybody in the match? That's, that's the plan. So yeah, everybody else is, is the tag team champions, the triple threat match, and then Shayna's going to fight Becky now. As the whole show is a total, what did we end up coming up with? It was what a C or was it a C minus? No, it was D plus. Gave it a D plus. A D plus, straight up. Because there was I only it was fair. That F really did it in for them. Now we tried to do it like teachers do, where we actually drop yeah. the grades, and we were trying to see which you know how that works. But I couldn't do over a D plus because there's only two times during the whole mat, three times in the whole entire pay per view that I sit there and felt. Like something actually happened. And this is the pay-per-view before WrestleMania. This is supposed to be something that gets us hyped for WrestleMania. And I feel coming out from it that no, not no, we no. didn't get anything built. The only thing that we really figured out was that Shane is going against Becky and all the other matches were just kind of there. I don't feel like we really told stories to get to WrestleMania. I don't feel like we added anything to any matches at WrestleMania, really. So this was, was just a, a pit stop. Uh, it was a very random pit stop on the way, an afterthought pay per view, which is supposed to be a big moment leading towards Mania. And, and now it's I guess funny. the big moments to lead for WrestleMania is going to have to be fucking Raw and SmackDown, which well, doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, this, this is the thing. So we all seen Shayna Baszler going to WrestleMania to fight Becky anyway. Yeah. We knew that was going to happen. They're feuding. Why wouldn't it happen? And so. Another predictable moment. Why wouldn't you do what you've done in past years where the winner of the Royal Rumble challenges for the belt, which is Drew McIntyre going against Brock? Yeah. Why not do a men's elimination chamber? Let, if you want Roman versus Goldberg, then let Roman win the chamber. Yeah. Besides doing this Shayna Baszler bullshit that I didn't care for. I mean, I think you should have made did a guy's elimination chamber, had Roman win, challenge Goldberg. Because literally, Roman just walked up and said, I'm next. And now he's in the now he's going for the universal title and there's no rematch clause for the fiend. There's which, nothing like that. Which reverts back to uh Vince mm -hmm. and it's Vince. It's solely Vince wanting to shove Roman Reign down down all of our throats. Going, I'll have some other videos. I'm doing the Fire Pro Wrestling um episodics episodic kind of weekly thing i'm doing it like two or three times a week now we'll get on there and stream for about an hour me doing the fire pro wrestling manager stuff so i'm gonna have those videos coming and i'm also just gonna have um other videos including wrestlemania stuff maybe raw reviews smackdown preview stuff whatever all that kind of stuff so we're gonna have more but yeah elimination chamber road to wrestlemania that's a d plus guys